You want me to go first? I'll knock this out in about, I don't know, 38, 48 seconds. I think that's good. No, I've got a real presentation. We in? Mute that. All right. Okay. We're live. We are live, guys. We are on the Wednesday lunch break. Lunch, lunch we time. Yeah, we're just live lunch time. Try to do this every Wednesday. Yeah. Other than next, next week. Yeah, next week we'll be bearing it. So. Um, so what we decided to do today is do kind of a gear review on First Light. We get a ton of emails on, hey, what were you wearing? What do you prefer? What pants does Cody wear? Um, all sorts of stuff like that. So we thought we'd kind of break it down on what we individually wear um, in the field. Yeah, so if you guys watch Land of the Free 1 and 2.0, I think combined over the course of 100 days, 90 days, Trent's taken four showers. <laughs> wow, that was the first, that was the first <laughs> thing to come out with. All right, yeah. yeah. And there, there is a good reason for that. And it honestly, yes. number one, we used to run cotton camo, like the old Predator. Everyone's like, oh yeah, Predator was awesome. Great camo uh, pattern, but it was cotton and it was miserable, like hot, sweaty, always stayed wet. Um, yeah, just not cotton kills. I'll just say that. Yeah, it so does. what we've learned and adapted to, like I said, First Light's been around for about 11, 12 years now, about the same time we have. And uh, they were the ones that really brought merino wool to the hunting sphere. And um, since using merino wool, Changes lives. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, amazing stuff. And when I tell people I went that many days without taking a shower, and I honestly still didn't, you could smell my clothes and they did not stink. Yeah. Believe it or not. I, 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 well, <laughs> and I think it's before true. we jump in here, a lot of questions that we always get, what do you guys do for scent elimination? What yeah. do you guys do for washing your clothes? A wind tester bottle. That's our scent elimination. We don't use any any spray down bottle stuff. We don't do. We just check the wind a thousand times a day is yep. what we do for our elk hunts. And, and the biggest thing, being active on a backpack hunt or or even like here blacktail hunting, for the most part, you're gonna sweat wherever you're going. So it's it's dang near impossible to control and contain that. Um, so merino wool is is one of the best. The natural properties of that is. Uh, it does not get that Patagonia funk per se or you know, the polyester funk. If you wear uh, some brands like an Under Armour or something like that that has that polyester in it, you ever take it a whiff can, like yeah. after just your first sweat and it's, it's rank, you don't get that with merino wool. It's just a natural property of that in the scent deal. So, um, so you want to just dive in? Sure. Head first. We going towards Trent. Trent brought a bag. I brought a tote, of course. I always have too much stuff. Yeah. Never use most of it. I know. But I am a minimalist in my backpack. It's the opposite. Like, I don't carry this stuff. I just have it with me. Start from the ground up. Undies. This is what I wear for undies. These are the first light merino mm -hmm. wool underwear. I like the short ones. The long ones that they have are pretty long. And uh, I have those too, and I wear those all season. But I like these shorter ones. This is, this is what I wear. I think we're just, I mean, we're digging deep. We're going okay. through it. Throw that up there on the table. We're going through it. Throw it up there. Yeah. You can touch those. These are washed. Um, Thank you. So, and dive into my pants. Well, I'll go through my free fully. Where are you? Socks. This is, I'm a, yeah. First light is what I wear all the way around. So, <laughs> yeah, but the shorter socks. I will say Trent is also nicknamed Lieutenant Dan. Oh, man. I carry. A lot of times, like when I went to the 53 day, or even last year when we did 40 some odd days, I brought, I think almost 40 pairs of socks. And they weren't all first light, but all merino wool. They were all merino wool. Some of the ones that were from Costco. Yeah, I just couldn't afford all first light. But at the same time, um, this is what uh, I wear normally. I'm wearing them right now. And if we do, like a lot of times, our four day, three night, or five day, Trent takes six pairs of socks. Yes. I take a Ziploc bag. I put. So I always because if I if I get jungle rot on my feet or whatnot, it's not a good trip for me. I always I change my socks constantly. That's just what I do. I sometimes twice a day. So I'm not like Spec that just keeps one pair on his pack, dips them in the creek, and throws them in carabiners yeah. on his pack, which is pretty pretty smart thing to do. But I like a new pair of socks. Pants. I didn't. My camo ones. I I just grabbed the regular. These are the obsidians. Um, 
I like them because they're super, super lightweight. If you're in super thick, thick country, like in Oregon and stuff, I have ripped a pair before just because <laughs> they are such lightweight. But, um, and then I would change to the guides or something if I'm in really, really thick stuff. But these breathe really well. These, I get wet, uh, even in like in the evenings when the dew comes out and, and some fog and stuff. I'll jump in my sleeping bag wearing the, my pants, with my pants on, and by the morning they're dry. So it, it's pretty amazing stuff. Like I said, super lightweight. I get them sizes too big. Honestly, I try to buy my pants a size or uh, at least a size bigger, but I wear suspenders all the time. That's it. So Where's it holds them up. Guy? Yeah, I'm a suspender guy. You'll see me always wearing suspenders. And that's just for like sometimes hiking. And you may be able to go back on some film. I'm not sure. Uh, we try not to show it too much. But sometimes I'll un if we're going on a big hike and we're covering lots of country and trying to get somewhere, I'll just unbutton and unzip. Weston actually taught me this. And probably the only thing he's taught me. But just anyway. Let's, let's, let's all hang out. Yeah, and you're just so you got a draft down there and you have the loose pants and um anyway it just provides more airflow how about that so these have worked really well where did you want these just put them somewhere down. towards the socks you can pile them on top of each other pile them on really top um okay i'm very simple in my hunting repertoire as far as my gear goes as far as clothing usually we're hunting obviously in september and this is my main staple a t-shirt this is what I wear. Short sleeve. Short sleeve t-shirt. I don't like stuff covering my arms a lot. It's just a preference. I hate hoods. You won't notice anything that I have with a hood on it. I Except just, for today. Well, a sweatshirt, but I don't wear the hood on. <laughs> yeah, that is true, I guess. And but, I, I honestly, I would say this probably comes from the background of cutting, would you say? I mean, yeah, probably like, a little bit. It's a visibility thing. And it's, and it's it's like Trent, Trent's one, two in the morning, like I'll have two layers on, a puffy jacket on, it's cold out, and he's like, eh, I'll warm up when I hike. He's a tougher man than I am. So, nah. short, short sleeve t-shirt. Dumber. Rocks it. Dumber. Um, I did not, I couldn't find my puffy. It's pretty much, I think it's meant to be rotted through somewhere. If you could pull me out one of those. That's your choice of. Yes. So, this is the jacket that Sirius. I take. So, the serious puffy jacket. So Serious. That's what I said. Like a cloud. Yeah. And I just wear the t-shirt and the puffy jacket I will put on like if when you're get back to camp or you decide where to camp at night throw this on it gets cold you know you're sitting down there either you have a fire or not you're cooking your mountain house or off-grid or whatever you're cooking um, yeah puffy's on go to bed get up anyway I always have this on me if it busts down raining or something but usually in September you're gonna get those rains that just last for 20 minutes or so and then it's over with you're back out hiking we can't really film very well in rain or snow or any condition like that so our objective is not being it we go to cover pretty much yeah we'll we'll just take cover underneath of a tree let it finish its own you know and then go back to hunting so that is another main staple for me and this is great for uh beating around town or wherever too i mean all these things actually can um be implemented in your day-to-day -day life rather what's, than just hunting what's your opinion on solid versus camo i i'm a camo dude i don't know i grew up camo down in it so uh as far as my day-to-day -day, like dig around i'm not the guy that wears camo top to bottom and going into walmart but you never wear like i never see you hunting in solid colors never no i don't i just I don't know why, but I'm a camo guy. And as far as fusion and cipher, I'm a fusion guy. I like fusion a lot. I don't know. It's 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 because of the green and the coast. It's the green and the coast. Yes, it is. Um, and I brought some extra, some other stuff, just some stuff that I would wear. Uh, these are glove liners, and these are beat to rat. But um, these things can make a giant difference. Believe it or not, they're super super thin. I mean, really, they're like paper thin, but, well, that happened, but, but no, these can make a giant difference in just keeping your hands warm. I just wore these in the snow, uh, on Land of the Free 1.0, actually, this is the exact pair that I wore, um, and as you can tell, they're all, some of the holes that I cut in them, so some of them I would take my knife, like this one, this is the one I run my phone with, with Onyx, I just cut a finger hole in it so I could actually use my, use my screen and I could. Yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, but these are a lifesaver. They're just a tiny, tiny 
a uh, little bit of fabric, but they can really make the difference when it's super cold or freezing out or, or snowy out. Biggest thing that I never thought that I would love that I am I, in I, love with. You remember I actually ordered those for you and you were like, what the? Idiot. <laughs> and then it was just like trekking poles. I probably cussed him like I did Trevor and now I love them. Um, I apologize if that's okay. Case. I, no, no offense. Huffy there. pants. Yeah. They are just uh, just like the jacket, except they're a pant. And what I do with them, and you guys might have saw it in Land of the Free 1.0 when it was super cold, like in Montana. I would wear these in the morning just to kind of get warmed up, but it's got these zippers. And so I would just take the zipper and zip both sides up quite a ways and, um, and wear them and walk around with them like that. So my bottom of my legs were kind of still hanging out, so I still got that draftier um, coolness, but at the same time, I had them on for sitting down um for glassing these things are awesome i'm sure in the bear hunt that's coming up here next week we're going to use these a ton yeah absolutely a ton. the so. other trick with puffy pants too it's kind of like your sleeping bag insulation if you do hike up you get hot sweaty um, when you get up to a glassing location throw a puffy jacket on puffy pants any of that sweat from your legs or if you walk through tall grass got them wet you could that body heat will dry it out so yeah as long as you have a little it's bit of air like a cocoon Cocoon. Cocoon. A okay, cocoon. You got any um, more in the natural grocery bag? Uh, yeah, natural grocery is almost done. So, uh, my kick around jacket, I have not wore this actually hunting, but this is my favorite jacket as we speak right now to date. Pop quiz, what's the name of it? This is the. Hang on. Hell. Oh, ha. Ha. Read the tag. I don't have a tag. Catalyst. Yes. It's part of the Catalyst kit. Anyway, this jacket is awesome. I love this coat um, And it does have a hood too, so I just don't use it But this would be my favorite run around town coat that I own Other than that Cody, I think I covered it from underwear to head. I don't wear a beanie. I just wear usually just a hat um, So so yeah, you'll you're gonna have a whole bunch. Of stuff. I got too much stuff. Like yeah. I said uh, so Take what it away about, Cody. Um, What's your opinion on rain gear? My opinion on rain... Oh, that's... Dang it. Did you bring it? I brought something. Okay. I yeah. prepared. So, rain gear... I don't really pack it with me. I've had trips where I thought, man, I, that would have been nice, but it wasn't like a make or break deal for me. And I'm just talking September right now. I'm just right, talking yeah. elk. Uh, this bear hunt, I'll have rain gear the whole time. But as far as elk hunting goes... Uh, I'm on the fence about rain gear, you know, because you can dry out so fast. If you're in that, even when I was in um, Montana, where it was like 20 degrees, 26 degrees, and a foot of snow on the ground, I never even brought, I never brought rain gear. So, but the Storm Tight is by far and above the best. That's what I use for steelhead fishing, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I'll take on the this. Seek. The Seek. The Seek. Yeah, Seek, seek jacket, Seek pants. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'm sure you've got those. I don't have those. Good. Good. So. We'll bring those later. But short sleeve t-shirt. Trent's not much one for layering. Literally, it's a short sleeve t-shirt or puffy jacket, correct? Yes. Yeah, I don't I do not do much of the whole, if you want to call it layering guide or whatever. I, um, no. You just, and that's where everybody is so, you so run different. Yeah, I run warm, and yeah. not only that, it's just like everybody's so different. And so I get all these messages on email and, and DMs we get and stuff. It's like, well, what did you wear? What is your preference? And I can't really just tell you, hey, this is what I do and it's going to work for you. Yeah. I think that's Trevor's my totally thing. different than you and I both. Totally yeah. different. Steve, he's gatored up the whole time. He's gatored, he's... but then he wears his short sleeve t shirt. Yeah. Time. No, no. It's just totally different. Yeah. Um, and there's no one way that you can just say, well, if you do this, you'll be comfortable the whole time. Everybody's different. Everybody yeah. runs different. So why not, our Code? Okay. Um, so. We'll start with the old underwear. Um, Who introduced you to those? Uh, actually, I've owned Ex Fischio for like oh, seven or eight years. Here we go. Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah. So, uh, bought my first pair when I, 2010, went to uh, the Marbles with Steve Arino. Uh, anyways, Ex Officio. Um, big fan of those in underwear. They are synthetic. They do get, I would say, a little bit stinkier than... Merino, the thing I do like about those, they don't stretch out. Yeah. So, um, probably more like Mine wear those. Out. Huh? Mine don't stretch out. Okay. 
Uh, personal preference. Personal again. preference. He bought me a pair of these. He didn't like them. Not a giant fan. Uh, so I wore those. Super comfortable. I also do wear their little the the wick. Uh, boxers as well but generally speaking i like every day wear the ex officios sweet um for my base layer uh, i should have organized this better uh, we'll start on top um my go-to in 80 80 degree heat cold weather whatever it is is a wick 150 hoodie um, so it's the same weight as Trent's uh, short sleeve t-shirt, but it's long sleeve and it's a hood. Um, I like this with the hood in sunny, hot weather, you're up there glassing, throw the hood over, you have sun protection on the back of your neck. Cold, chilly mornings, there you go. So I always, this is like my base layer for the top. Uh, let's see here. Um, my next piece that I usually where on the top is going to be this grid fleece and this is a um what is it cody it's a klamath hoodie just checking it says right there in the name tag <laughs> uh anyways this is a synthetic piece um i usually use this not so much in the active like when i'm hiking but uh stationary if we're slow moving calling like that i'll wear this over the top or around the camp uh, anything like that, but it's a grid fleece, so it's nice and lightweight, folds up in a backpack pretty well. Um, before that, I used to always wear the Chama hoodie, oh, uh, yeah, you which, did. Was, which was a, a piece that I was a big fan of for a long time. You and Trevor both. Yep. Uh, um, Try and hold those still when you're talking about them. Yep. Uh, let's see. We'll go base layer bottoms. I don't wear long johns all the time. But when I do, but when I do, I wear the uh, Capri long johns here. You just heard it right. He said Capris. Yeah. Capris. Yeah. That's what he said. Caprickles, man. Caprickles? Is that what men are calling uh, now? Yeah. Wow. Know. It's just a term. Uh, the cool thing with these, literally, you can wear them in some warmer temperatures, and they're not all the way. So you like they're designed to be mid calf, so where your sock comes up, so it's not like you're double layering down there. Um, they're really comfortable, like. Steve wears them like 24 even if it's seven, 85 matter. degrees out. He'll still be wearing long johns. But um, in September, a lot of times, depending on what the forecast is going to be, I'll take these with me, um, sleeping in them, whatever else. Uh, on the bottoms, I'm. Oop, not those. Let's see. I am a corrugate guide pant guy. They are. A synthetic material, um, the one thing I like is they're more durable than the obsidians, uh, especially hunting like, say, Colorado, a lot of blowdowns. Um, you can tend to catch these on branches. They're tough. They're tough, super tough. They are a little bit warmer, um, so like the West Technique of the open uh, zipper works well. Um, and it's nice. They've got some good side pockets to them, good access. A lot of times I'll uh, just always carry an extra wind checker in my pant pocket. Um, always have a knife, chapstick, all that. It's got good pockets. Uh, the other thing, I am not a uh, suspender guy. I am. There we go. Yeah. I'm a rope belt guy, so made this like three years ago. I literally actually wear it every day. Um, oh, I, I took it off, yeah, for today. For the presentation. But, yep, I just took some uh, P cord, made a rope loop. I actually broke a suspender in Colorado back in like 2013. Like tried to pull it up underneath because it rode up on my pack. So that was where the whole thing originated for me. And, and these are good. The reason he does the rope belt is because it's not like a big. It's belt, not like, big, like and you it see, doesn't, it doesn't have a, bite in. Doesn't have a belt buckle. Correct. So the scenario when wearing a pack or having something big right there, like I said, the suspenders. My waistline. I've got a low waistline, so it was like right where my pack was. If I wore suspenders, it dug in. Didn't really feel comfortable, so went to the rope belt. Um, as I worked the way down. Um, these are ones like spring, this spring season I will definitely be wearing. Just their light little flash gator. Um, and this is 
for the sake of ticks and not crawling like just another barrier to crawl up my leg because Cody is a tick and I did not say chick I said tick magnet tick magnet yeah, yeah. Um, it pretty much I don't know for whatever my smell of manliness just attracts them yeah the pheromones pheromones yeah um, and then last but not least uh, <clears throat> I carry uh, during elk season or most times I'll carry a puffy jacket and I kind of vary it depending on what the overnight lows are going to be because a lot of times I'll sleep in this or use it as a pillow. Um, if it's going to be really cold I, I'll run a Chamberlain um, or mostly the Cirrus puffy. The only thing I don't like about that it doesn't have a hood because I do actually like to have a hood. Um, let's see. Socks. So. Uh, I run a variety of socks, pretty much uh, Darn Tough is the brand that I like, um, depending on their light hiker, their medium hiker sock, and then I wear a uh, synthetic, a lower. Sorry. A synthetic liner, um, some are silk or a, a polyester. The thing I like about that, I can like wear a sock liner and then the next day wear this sock and it feels like a fresh sock. So I'm not like Trent. I don't pack two pairs of socks for every day. I usually on a trip, if we're gonna do a few, few, uh, few day trip overnight, three nights, I'll carry three pairs of socks. So four or five days and just in a pair of sock liners. So I do tend to have stinky feet unlike Trent. So fresh and clean. Fresh and clean. Lieutenant Dan. Uh, same deal in my pack. Um, I just put them in a Ziploc bag, compress them down and uh, yeah. And this is pretty much like I don't take extra pants when we pack. No. I don't take extra shirts. It's like either it's on me or maybe a layer like this and a puffy. Other than that, it's just the clothes I'm wearing. So I don't take a change of clothes even on long 10 day stuff. I've done the same pair of pants, same underwear, um, no spares. So uh, last but not least, one of the items that I, this is a, I would say last year, we actually had great weather last year. And I don't think I took great one. weather. Yeah, during September. Uh, the forecasts were good. We got rained on a few days in Colorado, but just like light sprinkles. Yeah. Um, is this storm, uh, the vapor, light. yeah, the storm light vapor jacket. And this is their lightest rain jacket. Um, you know, I always will kind of just roll this up into its hood. Just like that. It smells awful. It smells like campfire. That's not campfire I'm smelling, you know. I don't smell s'mores at all. Anyways, uh, throw that in the bottom of the pack or use it as a, a liner inside. Like to keep, if you need something that needs to stay dry in your pack, open that up, shove whatever you need inside, fold the arms in. It's basically a dry bag inside your pack. Um, you have the same gloves as I did. I do. I don't use them much though. Not a big glove guy. I Trevor's a big glove guy. Yeah, he's a big glove guy. Big he's glove also guy. a beanie under his hat guy. Uh, rocks yeah. a beanie. I like a neck gaiter, which I think is in my pack actually. Uh, what gaiters are those that you mentioned? You didn't say which ones they were. It's their. I don't know if they say them. Um, I can't remember the name. New. No. Traverse. That's what so I said. Traverse. And what's, uh, is there a size to those or not? Um, there is. I run large, extra large. I got size 14 feet. So, and they work great for me. They're they're tight. They're not too tight up top. But I like them. Like I said, spring season is just one extra layer for that tick to kind of have to navigate. And then all I'm I'm gonna wear solid color pants um, bear season because. Ticks crawling on this, can't really see them. Solid colors, they stand out a little bit more, so my lower half will have Whoa. Uh, brown pants on. There's, There's a little some, tidbit for. Tidbit. Wow. Um, Didn't see that coming, did I? Yeah, the other, just on, on clothes stuff, uh, depending on how I'm packing, a lot of times I'll throw like my Klamath in a dry bag if I'm not gonna use it, but I know it's got some uh, rain coming up. Just. I, I kind of like a 
few of these little, you know, dry bag for, like I said, Ziploc or dry bag for keeping socks and anything that is going in your pack dry. You usually wear a beanie and stuff. I do. I, I, yeah, I've got, it's, it's in my pack. Um, so it's that Merino, the light Merino beanie and then a neck gaiter as well. I think I've got a neck gaiter in here. It's just my, um, and honestly, like last year I packed these gloves, mm. never worn. So probably not going to pack these gloves again. Just, just me. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big glove guy. So, and I, I do, I have wore the Catalyst jacket. I like that, like Trent said, kind of all around. Um, but the weight to insulation, it's not an incredibly warm piece. So if it's like cold, cold weather and you're going to be hiking, it's a great piece because it's not super hot. Um, right. But like elk season, for me, I didn't find a great use for it. So um, if you're going to stop in glass, I like a puffy jacket over that. So. Couple questions. Yeah, yeah as, bring as, some. As a hunter starting out on a budget when trying to build clothing gear, what is more important, uh, pants or shirt as a new hunter? I appreciate that. Like, if you're just going to buy, I, start out with pants or shirts. I, I would say uh, a merino t shirt. I'd say base. Yeah, go yeah. base. So go with what's going to touch your skin, yep. is what would be my advice. And so either it would be an undershirt, your first layer, because that's your first layer of protection against body odor. That's your first layer, you know. I would go with base layer, uh, whether it be just underwear and a t-shirt, you know, mm -hmm. the pants and everything. I mean, it's it's important, but I don't think it's as important yeah. as, uh, as a t-shirt or something like that. How much warmer are the corrugates compared to the obsidians? And then also, how durable are the obsidians? I would say the durability is twice as tough as the obsidians and half again warm. Yeah, I don't know about half. I wore the I wore the guides this last year quite a bit, um, and not a t uh, yeah, a little bit. And they're, they're a not. little they're a little bit warmer. They yeah. actually so um, first light is coming out with a new pant. Uh, I ran a set of prototypes last year in Colorado for a couple days. They were made for two sizes too small for me, um, so I didn't really get a look good, good though. Yeah, look good. Uh, kind of a moose knuckle deal, but showed your six pack. Yeah. Uh, they, they were a little tight, but they, they were a lighter nylon pant, which I like the nylon um, over a polyester. And I think those are going to be a, honestly, I think like the September pant, they're going to be Down a perfect, the middle. perfect mix. Yep. Yeah. How does First Light compare to uh, any of the other camo so patterns? We started out with First Light camo pattern or, or the other companies? Camo company and pattern. Yeah. Pattern. So we started out with First Light when they first started. So we went from cotton uh just regular cotton honestly predator camo but it was in cotton uh to first light so i i, I don't i've never worn anything else so i i couldn't compare it I, cody may have yeah but. i i've worn um not so much like other hunting brands i've worn icebreaker merino i would say their merino what i've seen and touched and felt their uh their newest merino the merino x with the uh, nylon mix in it is probably the best out there um, but I think the other companies make great stuff as well. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's kind of interesting. Like, you're either a first light guy or brand X or brand, you know, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. And, like, if someone's wearing another clothing company, it's not like I'm a, I got a riff on them or anything like that. No. I mean, dirty, no. Right? They just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? Um... What do you guys do when your boots get wet on the inside? How do you deal with it at the end of the day? Do you just swap socks or? Greatest question ever. That's why I carry a ton of socks, but greatest question ever. Uh, I've always said who, whoever makes a backcountry boot dryer. That's lightweight. That's lightweight. I've got some ideas. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to literally look at like some computer fans, the USB power, just air circulation. I've heard guys, I've stuck, uh, you know, the hand warmers. In there but it kind of goes flat because it doesn't get air circulation um, I've heard people, people do rocks in the rocks, fire rocks in the fire and then in a sock to dry it out um, the biggest thing is just getting air on them so if you are gonna be up in a place and glassing you know in the afternoon pull your I, I would say even recommendation during the day yes. pull your boots off pull the insoles out let them air out um, at night take your insoles out of the boots let those air out 
word of caution, be very, very careful around fires and boots. Yes. Um, I ruined a pair of boots. Tie. Tie. Yeah, tied in, boots in Colorado. You know, the rubber ran basically shrunk um, over that. But pair of socks. Um, and that, the one tip like we learned from Spec a couple of years ago, he carries a pair and he's got a little like, just a little ditty bag, you know, that uh, mesh ditty bag. And he would rinse his socks, hang those on the outside of his pack. They would dry out during the day, most time, like I said, in September. And he'd have fresh socks. So, you know, if your feet... Fresh. Fresh-ish. Ish. Yeah. If your feet get wet, have a pair of socks, change those out. Um, like I said, insoles, getting air to them as much as But possible. Cody made a good point. In the middle of the day, when you're sometimes just sitting down, waiting on a bowl or playing a slow play on a bowl or whatever you're doing there, uh, or you may be glassing, which we don't do often, but sitting down, just taking a break for lunch in the sun, take those shoes off, put your Crocs on that you usually have on your pack if you do that or whatnot, and take those insoles out, loosen those laces all the way, open that tongue up and let those things breathe. Uh, that's a huge, huge thing to do. And then when you put them back on, it feels refreshing. It feels, it, you, you feel way better than just, I mean, I'm on and off with my boots all day. So, yeah. Talk about um, just scent control. Why don't you use scent blocker? This was someone one of the and then another one said, "Do you guys use underarm deodorant?" Well, we use it all. Great question. Uh, Old Spice Fresh is my scent. Oh yeah. Literally pack that in my pack and put it on while I'm hunting. And the question on why don't you guys use body scent eliminator is because we're not going to pack a spray bottle, you know, four miles back into the back country with us and spray down, especially when you're hunting up groups of five. I mean, to get everybody to do it for one and then to fool an elk's nose for two, it, it just, it's just not worth it to us. Yeah. Don't, play, yeah. We just play the wind. Play the wind. Um, we do, uh, on occasion, like we'll carry uh, a bottle of cow and heat or cow urine. And we have had the case where the wind's kind of questionable or shady spray that and it's given us an extra second couple seconds yeah, maybe yeah. I, I one time in my life i've actually seen a bull straight down when we sprayed it and he came right back to us in wyoming back in 2012 but that's pretty a rare. rare occasion i mean it's just you have to play you have to work with the wind that you've got and yeah. i what i in my opinion if you're out hiking and you're in in the woods and you're sweating it doesn't matter what kind of scent products you're going to use, you're, an elk is going to smell you. So. Wind is everything. Because yeah. we're not just a, this is going to sound bad, but we're not just a whitetail hunter in a tree stand sitting without, you know, body sweat going with that, you know, it, it's, it, I think it's a whole different environment. Um, talk about camo patterns now. Uh, what do you like about the first light patterns? Uh, and does a camo pattern actually matter uh, when hunting? Uh, so I think there's there's two two schools of it. I think having a high contrast open pattern, um, such as like the fusion, so you can see this dark dark pattern right here next to an open white. When you look versus a mimic pattern, if you look in the woods and you can see like a lot of times there's whites and blacks, even though it's all grays or greens, it's just the way the light hits. So I think open pattern is key. Um, the one thing I think that camo does help with breaking your outline if you don't expose yourself to the sun or the, the light per se. So setup is critical. Um, you know, you see us wearing face paint, especially Trent, all the time. I think it helps. Yeah. It, uh, it's just that... Um, your face is kind of like a white mirror. You know, it seems like to me, you can tell people, especially if anybody's wearing camo, you look at them, the first thing you see is if they don't have face paint or... A head mask or whatever is a bright face. You yeah. Know? Um, but I think, yeah, pattern, I wouldn't say s having something on to break up your outline. I mean, you've seen guys kill a lot of stuff in flannel and, you know, oh, yeah. plain color pants. Um, I think the biggest thing is setting up in the shadows over in the light. So, yeah. Uh, and I don't know the argument about green versus how yeah. an ungulate sees. I'm, I'm not sure going ungulate. down that. Nice. Going nice. down that, uh, yeah, ungulate road. Sure, I don't, I don't know, honestly. Love it, love it. Match the hatch. Are the gators worth buying and wearing? Depends on who you are. Everybody is totally different. I hate them. They just make my boots even hotter than they already are, and um, my feet get warm, and it starts from my ankle up. I, I just, I'm not a big fan of them. I'd rather not wear them. 
Um, that being said, and in, in, in maybe, maybe it depends on climate and where you're hunting as well. Like on the Oregon coast, you get fog every single night. So all that grass is wet. So your pants get wet, soaks onto your socks, soaks down in your boot. The gators can prevent from that. Uh, it, it just all, there's so many different variables. It's just some people Steve, like them. Steve wears them. Steve wears them. Five days a year. It, yes, every single day. And yeah. he, you know, he loves them. In the mountain bike, like when we were That's mountain cool. bike hunting a, a lot, I wore a lot of gators with a trail running shoe just because. Uh, it helped keep any of the dirt and debris out. I don't like a knee-high gator, um, but like a short gator like this helps. If you have a low top boot, um, you know, like even the like the summit or something, you can get stuff down like dirt, rocks, anything like that. That will help prevent that too. So it's a light, but it does even this lightweight, breathable gator adds temperature to your boot, so your foot is going to perspire more with the gator on versus not. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere locally for people in Oregon to try on crispy boots? Uh, Bunch of places. Yeah, I mean, I know like Southern Oregon, um, here in Roseburg, Waldron's has them, Borac has them, Archery World. Up Baker in, Boots. Baker Boots. Um, I know on the I-5 corridor, I think there's a dealer down in Medford as well. Uh, uh, big, not Black, Blackbird, maybe? Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, I'm not sure about Eastern Oregon, but... I think maybe uh, the shop in La Grande has them. Oh, do they? John Appleton's shop. Yeah. So. No, they're around. Just look for shops and look. I mean, they're. they're maybe you can Google it if. Yeah, Google it. Or, and I mean, Crispy's pretty. They're starting to become really, really popular in the hunting community. I think they've got a good too, like to buy them online if you don't want return to return them. You, gotta, you can return them. So. During 2.0, do we. Switch up the clothing, or do we keep the same thing pretty much um, state to state? Mm, same. Pretty much what everybody wears is yeah. kind of what they wore. I mean, there's we don't there's no agenda as far as well. Now you got to wear this on your hunt. Everybody's like I said, everybody's totally different, and we all wear and the it, stuff that like works for us. Spring bear. I'm pretty much this is what I'm gonna wear. Spring bear. Uh, I'm gonna throw in a pair of rain pants. Yeah. So. Because we will spend more time glassing seated through those rainstorms. So um, even in September, though, if we're, it's calling for rain for a couple days, I usually don't even take a pair of rain pants. I'll just wear a rain jacket. So pretty much got pretty it. Pretty much uh, it. Yeah, if, if people want to look up places to try on boots or stuff, they just need to Google it, especially in other states. Yeah, you know, I'm not yeah. sure. There's a bunch of dealers around. Um, like I said, the the cool thing with merino and synthetics. We've talked about this before, multi-day backpack hunts. If you are wet, you can crawl into your sleeping bag. Um, and even in a down bag, your body temperature will dry that out. So, uh, and, and that's a lot of what we do. That's why you don't, you know, we can't film in the rain. So we're not, you know, super rain hunters as far as that goes because we can't capture it for the content for you guys. So a lot of times we'll just throw up a tarp or set up a tent and wait it out. So, yep. But this is our September wear fashion show. What do you guys think of Lunchtime Live? We picked yeah. this topic because last time in the comment section, someone said, hey, what are you guys wearing? It's, it's a commonly asked question. We want to keep these things fun, interactive. So if there's something that you guys are dying to learn, um, I know one thing people have been asking a lot on camera gear, that will be on the hopper coming up. Um, if there's some calling stuff or bow stuff, whatever you guys have questions on that we can hang out eat, eat some lunch together uh and help you out help you out we're, we're here so just hit that comment section below and uh, we greatly appreciate it just love that you guys are here hanging out with us um, got a podcast coming up in about a half an hour with garrett weaver which we will release here in a little bit but other than that we're good yeah all right thank you guys so much for joining us weston out all right